Hallelujah, Lord, we magnify your name, Jesus. Come on, let's worship a little bit. Praise his name. Oh, yeah. We magnify your name, Jesus. Oh. Come on, we've come to magnify. We've come to magnify. We've come to glorify. We've come to glorify. We've come to lift him high. We've come to lift him high. And praise and praise his holy name. Yeah. Hey. Oh, we've come. We've come to magnify. We've come to glorify. We've come to glorify. For all that you have done, our hands to you we raise. You are worthy of all honor. We lift our voice and say, Hallelujah, we lift up your name. We come to magnify. We come to glorify. We come to glorify. We come to lift him high. We come to lift him high and praise his holy name. We've come to magnify. That's what we've come to do. We've come to, we've come to glorify. We've come to lift him high. We've come to lift him high. Yeah. And praise his holy name. Yeah. Sing glory. 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 Sing glory. 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 Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. To magnify, we've come to glorify, we've come to glorify, we've come to lift him high, we've come to lift him high, and praise his holy name. Yeah, yeah. we've come, we've come to magnify, that's what we're here to do, we've come to glorify, we've come to glorify, we've come to lift him high, we've come to lift him high, and praise his holy name. For all that you have done, our hands to you we raise. You are worthy of all honor. We lift our voice and say, Hallelujah, we lift up your name. We come to magnify. We come to glorify. We come to glorify. We come to lift him high. We come to lift him high. We've come, yeah. We come to magnify. We come to glorify. We come to glorify. Oh, we've come to lift him high. We come to lift him high. Yeah. And praise his holy name. Hey. Sing glory. 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 Sing glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah.
Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for you alone are worthy of the glory, Jesus. And Lord, we declare that today, Father. And we celebrate the birth of you, our King Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hello, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Bracewood Church. We thank God for bringing us the end of perhaps the most tumultuous year for most of us. This year, 2020, and whatever we went through, did not take God by surprise, as Pastor often says. God knew it all at the beginning of the year, while we were oblivious to impending events, just like Job. So as we stand on the cusp of New Year, let us affirm that our God knows all that will happen in 2021. And like Job, declare that God can do all things. No purpose of God for us in 2021 can be thwarted. Now, just before Jesus fed the 5,000, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy food for these people to eat? But John 6, verse 6 tells us that Jesus himself knew what he would do. But he said this to test Philip's faith, to train Philip to trust him. So like Philip, Jesus expects us to enter 2021 trusting him because he already knows what has been planned for us. So the challenge to you and to me is to trust him and to commit to Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. May the grace, peace, and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ be your portion in 2021. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My name is Jay Blessing Afeni. And this is Teresa Afeni. The year 2021 is upon us. And I thank the Lord for his blessing and his grace for bringing us this far. My prayer for Brazil Assembly of God Church and our members this year 2021 is that it will be a year of healing, a year of blessing, a year of great prosperity, and that each and every member of our church will have their best year ever, ever. I will wish you the blessings in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2 through 13. On behalf of the Affini family, we wish you a happy new year. Amen. Amen. Good day, Bracewood. My name is Bodifale, one of your letter deacons. And sitting by my side here is my wife, Estella Fale. We want to thank the Lord for the year 2020 that has come to an end. We want to, it has been an eventful year, but by the grace of God, we were able to live through it and survive it. And so we give thanks to the Lord. We want to thank our pastors, the lead pastor, Pastor Steve and Sister Donna, and all the pastors for the great job they've done, even with all the eventful year that we've been able to keep fellowshipping together online and before we came back again on campus. So it's been a tremendous year as a church. But we look forward to a, a better year ahead in 2021. I know a lot of people, people might have lost their loved ones or lost their jobs during the year 2020, 2020 but we, it's our prayer that God will, will, will comfort all those who have lost their loved ones and provide for those who continue to provide for those who have lost their jobs. As we go into 2021, let's go with hope and trust in the Lord. The Lord that saw us through 2020 is still on the throne. He will go with us into the year 2021 and that our, the, year, the new year will be a glorious year, a prosperous year, a blessed year, and all that the locust and the cankerworm have taken from us in 2020 shall be replenished in the year 2021 in the name of Jesus. On behalf of my wife and myself, we want to wish you a glorious and prosperous year 2021 in Jesus' name. 
Happy New Year. Hello, Blessed Family. Special thanks to Pastor Steve for allowing us the opportunity to greet this great family of faith. No better way to welcome you to the new year than to reassure you the words of the Lord. Isaiah 43, 15 and 16, and 18 and 19 says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator and King. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and strength in the wasteland. Brethren, it is true that the year 2020 was very unusual. It is true that we now have lost over 300,000 souls nationwide. It's also true that some of our family members may have been impacted directly or indirectly. It is equally true that many have lost their jobs and source of income. However, what is more true is that our God is faithful and in absolute control. To take advantage of what God is doing, God has given us two directives in verse 18. One, forget the former things. Two, do not dwell on the past. Why? Because of the promise of verse 19 where he says, I am doing a new thing. In the year 2021, the Lord wants us to focus on him so that we can see and appreciate what he's doing in our lives, in our communities, in our church. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Bless with family. With this, we say to you, we, we love, love you, you. Happy, Happy New Year, year and God, God bless you. Hello, friends and fellow worshipers at Brazewood Church. As this year draws to a conclusion and we start thinking about next year, Stuart and I want to offer some words of encouragement and just an inspiration to you. To say that this year has been a unique year would be a huge understatement. The constant images that bombard us through TV and the newspapers, just the daily statistics that we see from COVID, all the tension and stress and turmoil that's taken place in the world this year can load us up with burdens, can just weigh us down. And yet Jesus said, that he would take those burdens. He also told us that we, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Paul spoke more directly in an analogy of running a race in Hebrews 12. He said, let us cast off those burdens and all the things that encumber us, the sins that entrap us, all of those things, so that we might run the race with joy and gladness. But he said, if you don't keep your eyes focused on Jesus, you won't be able to win that race. You'll get distracted. You'll get off course. We must stay focused on Him and give Him the glory and give Him the honor because He's the one that set that race and He's asked us to run it. And we pray that you will run the race with perseverance and with hope. And we encourage you to renew your mind daily in the Word so you will not grow weary or lose hope. And we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hello, Bracewood. Deacon and Sister Jones here to wish you a happy and prosperous new year. I just wanted to pen a few thoughts of God to put on my heart to share with the congregation. I know most of you are glad that 2020 has ended, but just because the calendar has changed doesn't mean that everything will be perfect. You see, life will always have some ups and downs. That's just the way life is designed. It's built into the system that God has given us. He doesn't make things one-sided. Everything comes in pairs. Have you ever seen a top without a bottom? Up without down? Front without back? Right without wrong? And how can there be good without bad? Peace without war? Pleasure without pain? Health without sickness? Light without darkness? Hope without despair? Rich without poor? Love without hate? Better without worse? Life without death? If you take away sad, then happy has to go with it. And without death, there can be no eternal life. You know, God was with us when we took our first breath, and he would be with us when we take our last. So with all the time in between, we should praise him daily for the blessings of life. So let's just strive to make each day a 10, 
because Revelation tells us in the end, we win. God bless. Have a great year. And remember, relax. God is still in control of everything. Thank you. Good evening. This is Donna. I um, just wanted to say, be one of the first ones to tell you Happy New Year. It's a couple days away, but uh, we're already thinking about the good things that are going to be happening in 2021. We know, as we all do, that 2020 has been a very challenging and difficult year for so many. And um, we're just looking forward to 2021 and believing that God has better things in store for us this year. I believe as we put our lives in God's hands, there's no better place to be. We are trusting that 2021, that God has spectacular things in store for us. Let's finish out 2020 and what would be pleasing to the Lord. And that would be to be praising and thanking Him for all He has done and all that He's going to do in 2021. There's no better way to enter the new year than to be praising Him and thanking Him for His abundance, for His love and His grace and His mercy. So along with you, I pray that we all are willing to put our lives in God's hands. There's no better place to be. And we look forward, forward to see what God's going to do in 2021. Stephen, I love you. We pray for you and we pray God's blessing and very best for you in Jesus' name. I want to thank the Braisewood Church Deacons Fellowship members and their spouses for those encouraging words that they shared with us for 2021. They're an anointed group of people that love you, care about you, and represent you very, very well. Represent the kingdom of God very well. We continue to pray for Godfrey, Godfrey Udama for his complete and total recovery and strength and that God would bring him back to us just as soon as possible. Don and I love each and every one of you. We've just celebrated a wonderful 2020 Christmas. Don and I pray that you were blessed. There was a married couple who were out shopping for Christmas and suddenly the wife realized that her, her husband had disappeared. He wasn't with her. She thought he had been. So somewhat irritated, the wife called to her husband's mobile phone and demanded, where are you? And the husband responded, darling, do you remember that little jewelry shop where you saw that beautiful diamond necklace and totally fell in love with it? But we didn't have the money at the time. And he said, darling, It'll be your, I said to her, darling, it'll be yours one day. The wife said, yes, I remember that, my love. And the husband said, well, I'm at the Starbucks next to that shop. Well, sometimes, sometimes things don't come out just the way we think they ought to. But I do pray that this Christmas was a memorable one, that you were able to spend with family and friends, and to thank God for the gift that he has given to us, the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. 2020 has been marked with so many challenges, financial challenges, physical challenges, national challenges as we've gone through a tumultuous election cycle, and as we've each faced something that we've never encountered before, COVID-19 pandemic. At the beginning of this year, we never had a clue what we would be facing. We never had a clue that COVID-19 was even a possibility. No one was prepared for what we were to face, and yet we know and knew then that God is in control. And God is still in control of our lives. While no one knows what 2020 has in store for us, none of us knows. We don't have a clue, just as we didn't at the beginning of 2020. While no one knows what 2021 has in store, and there are many that will now declare that the worst is yet to come, I declare to you today, relax. God is in control control. Just as he was in control of 2020 all through the pandemic, in every encounter, every situation that we faced, he is still in control. In 2019, I introduced the words that I end every service in 2020. Here are the words, relax. God is in control. Had no idea how prophetic those words would be and how necessary they would be in the year 2020. And yet, we know that God is in control, and we have that comfort and that strength. These words have encouraged me, they've challenged me, and they've comforted me throughout the entire year. And others have had to remind me from time to time that God truly is in control. The word relax means loosen up, lighten up. The word relax means chill out. <laughs> we can relate to the necessity of that in our life. The definition of relax is 
to make less tense or rigid. It means to make less severe or stringent, to deprive of energy, strength, or purpose, to relieve from nervous tension. It also means to treat hair chemically in order to relax curls. But that doesn't have anything to do, <laughs> anything to do with the message here today. Joni Erickson Tata, and by the way, I just read the other day that she has tested COVID positive, and we need to pray for her. She is a paraplegic, was in a terrible swimming accident many, many years ago, loves the Lord, has been serving God faithfully, and is a strong proponent for those that have faced uh, physical crisis in their life. But she said, nothing is a surprise to God. Nothing is a setback to his plans. Nothing can thwart his purposes, and nothing is beyond his control. Let me say that again. Nothing is beyond his control. And so I want to just briefly challenge you with a few words. Relax. God's got this. That's the first thing I want you to know. Relax. God's got this in 2021. Before we ever get there. Before the, the first minute passes in this new year, God has got this. He's got it all under control. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20 says, and this is Joseph's response to his brother's actions. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Oftentimes, we only know in retrospect that God is in control. And not only is he in control, but he will take things that typically would be destructive or typically would not be in our favor, and he can turn them around. So going into this new year, we know that, that, that whatever we face and whatever we go through, God can turn it around and make something that appears to be devastating, appears to be harmful, appears to be a challenge, and he can turn it all around and turn it into something that is good for us, to accomplish what is good in our life. So my word to you is this, relax. God is in control. Relax. It'll all work out for your good. Everything will work for your good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those that are called according to His purposes. All things work together for good. Sometimes we just have to step back and just wait. Sometimes we have to step back and just not do anything. Sometimes we have to step back and just listen. Just not move and wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait for His timing. Wait for His instruction. Wait for His guidance and wait for His word. So it's all going to work out for your good. We have that confidence going into this new year. It's all going to work out for our good. So again, let me remind you, relax. God is in control. And then I also want to share with you this. You can relax because God's promises will sustain you. We are people of God's word. We pray the word. We speak the word. We confess the word. And we believe the word. We, we make the word the lamp that guides and directs every decision that we make and every step that we take. The word sustain means to support, to uphold. The word sustain means to provide and to hold. And all of this is for you. So when I say, when I encourage you to relax because God's promises, God's word will sustain you, what I'm saying is that God's word will support you. It will uphold you. It will lift you up. When you're about to sink, God will raise you up. It will provide for you. That regardless of what the circumstances may be in the world or in our nation, God will provide for you. The Bible says he'll provide all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Not according to the government's riches, not according to a friend's riches, or our ability to even make riches, but according to His riches. He will provide all of our needs. And can I tell you, our God is a more than enough God to supply every need that you have or will ever have in your life. The word sustain also means to hold you. And I think that's so important. That there are so many times where we need to feel the arms of God wrapped around us. But even when we don't feel his arms or feel his presence, he is right there with you. God will be with you every step of the way, every minute, every second of 2021. God will be right there with you. He said, I'll never leave you. He didn't say, I'll be with you in the good times. He didn't say, I'll be with you when everything is rosy. 
He said, I will be with you always. I love that word, always. And even if I don't sense his presence holding me, lifting me up, I know that he's there because his word promised me. And remember, we are people of the word of God. And all of this is for you. God's promise will sustain you. It's all for you. And I want to encourage you as we face 2021, know this. We can go into it with hope. We can go into it with joy. We can go into it, well, relaxed, because God is in control. And I want to encourage you. Let me, let me read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 through 3 in the New Century Version. And this is, this is the failure of Israel to enter into the promised land. And this is what God says. Now, since God has left us the promise that we may re enter into his rest, let us be very careful so none of you will fail to enter. The good news was preached to us as it was to them. Now, listen to this. But the teaching they heard did not help them because they heard it, but they did not accept it with faith. We who have believed are able to enter and have God's rest. We've heard the word. We've heard the promises of God. And we've embraced them by faith. What is faith? Trust. Just trust God. When you don't know which direction to turn, trust God. When you don't know what decision to make, just trust God. His promise is that we will have rest. Rest. And while the world may be floundering, where the world may be confused, where the world may not, be, know, may not know which direction to go, we do have a guide. It is the Holy Spirit within us who leads us and guides us into the eternal direction that God has in store for us. And I want to encourage you. We have accepted God's word. And, and again, let me remind you, and especially in 2021, we are people of the word of God. That's our sustenance. That's our foundation of our faith, the foundation of our confessions, the, the words that we speak. There are no more powerful words that can be spoken than the Word of God. So when you have a problem, speak the Word of God. When you're not, you don't know which direction to go, speak the Word of God. And through it all, know this, that we will have rest and assurance all throughout 2021. And I want to encourage you, as you face a new year, Face a new day. Face the unknown. Relax. God is in control. I don't know what 2021 will bring. I have no clue. I, I, I was full of hope and anticipation in 2020, and, and I was, those hopes weren't dashed. God protects. God provides. God is leading us. God is, is, is holding us. And, and so, as I go into this next year, it is also filled with unknown. But this I know. I believe in Jesus. I know that. And I know you believe that. And if you don't, there is no better time to enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ than, than before New Year's Day. To simply pray a very simple prayer. And I know I've said this before, but let me repeat it again. God makes things so very simple for his creation. He makes things so simple for us. And so, to enter into a relationship with him. Not religion, not just obeying rules, but a relationship with a God who loves you. And he demonstrated that love by sending Jesus Christ. And so to enter into that relationship in a brand new year, to start over, not only to start a new year over, but to start a new life over, we pray a simple prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of everything I've done wrong, every mistake I've ever made, every sin I've ever committed. Forgive me. But Heavenly Father, I don't just need you to forgive me. I need you to help change me. Change my life. Change the, the, the tumultuous time of my life, the mistakes that I've made. Change me. The Bible says, the old is gone and the new has come. And if you pray that simple prayer, forgive me, change me, and begin that relationship with me every single day. You see, when you pray that prayer, that's not the end. That's just the threshold of a brand new life, a new beginning. It doesn't mean there won't be difficulties that come along the way. But what it does mean is that God will be with you throughout every difficulty, through every challenge, through every crisis, but through every victory, through every joy. He'll be with you. 
and he'll guide you. Pray that prayer. And if you did, would you, would you simply make note in the comments below? And, and, and our pastor, adult ministries pastor, Dr. Darlington, is right there, and he'll be happy to talk with you and pray with you. We're not trying to get you to join our church. We're not about that. Now, we'd love to have you join if you desire to, and we would be overwhelmed with joy if you did. But our concern is more building the kingdom of God than just building a church. So if you just give us your name or, or simply, simply put, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, Dr. Darlington will respond. If you need help, we'll guide you. We'll send you materials so that you can take your walk with God to a, a brand new level. And we promise this, we will walk with you. Pray that prayer. The Bible says he's faithful and just, and he will forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I want to remind you again, all of the Bravewood worshipers, everyone who is tuned in, I want to remind you of this. For 2021, not just with the new year, but even the days before the new year, relax. God is in control. And I believe that God has good just for you. It's time to present the Lord's tithes and offerings. And let me just say this. If you're a guest and you've joined with us, it's not necessary for you to contribute, for you to give. We don't expect that. To our guests, I would never invite someone over to my home and then expect them to, to give money to, for the meal. That's not what this is about. But for Brazewood worshipers and for those that want to contribute, it's time to present the Lord's tithes and offerings. And, and our theme for this year, for the remainder of this year, is celebrate the gift. What a wonderful God we serve. He's not a vengeful God. He's not a hateful God. He's not an angry God. In fact, I've said many times, our God is a happy God. He smiles more than he frowns and laughs more than he cries. But that's our theme. Celebrate the gift. And our text is Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And the scripture says, For the wages of sin is death. But that's not the end. Wouldn't that be horrible if that was the end? The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. The free gift of God. That's, that's God's desire to pour free gifts to his children. Good gifts. The Bible says if an earthly father desires to give good gifts to his children, how much more our heavenly father desires to give good to those who love him. The gift of God that he has given to us, he's given freely. You can't earn it can't deserve it. You can't obey enough to receive this gift. You, you cannot work hard enough. You cannot sacrifice enough to receive this gift. But understand this, God doesn't expect you to either. God gives a free gift. Now, what's interesting is you don't buy a free gift. If you bought it, it wasn't free and it wasn't a gift. This is something that is given, something that is expressed, a free gift. And this gift is given free. To me, the value of a gift by a friend is determined by the amount of time that that person will spend with me. Somebody who, who I don't hardly know or, don't, or barely know who gives me a gift certainly is appreciated and accepted with joy, but it's different than a person who gives me a gift that I know, a family member or a friend. The time that is given, the time that is invested in that relationship means that the gift has greater value to me in my life. Now, let me add again, every gift is valuable, every one. But it just, the, the great, you understand what I'm saying. The greatest value to me is gifts given to me by people that I've spent time with. And any gift that Donna gives me is not measured by the financial cost of that gift. It's not measured by the price. Donna could give me something that costs practically nothing, and it would mean something to me because she has invested her time into my life. Literally, she has given me 46 years of her life together. We've been married that long, and it's been a joyous time as well. Now, God has given me not only eternal life, and that's wonderful. I, well, wonderful doesn't even describe it. There are no words to describe the gift of eternal life. But the gift is eternal life with Him, which means God desires to spend time with me. You get that? God loves me so much that He wants to spend eternity with me. Now, just think of this. If you had a friend or somebody that you knew that came to stay with you and they, 
They stayed for, they said they were going to stay for two weeks and ended up being three weeks and four weeks and five weeks and a month and two months. You might wonder after a little while, though you love them and care about them, you might, might wonder, when are they going home? You might even ask, um, that airline ticket, uh, when, are you, when are you going to the airport? Don't, don't want, don't, not rushing you, just don't, don't want you to miss your flight. <laughs> but that's not how God feels about it. God loves you so much that he doesn't want to spend a day, a week, a month, a year. He wants to spend eternity with you. That's the gift, eternal life. Now, while we're here, we have joy. And so I want to encourage you, we celebrate the gift that God has given to us, not by what we give, but through our obedience, because obedience is spelled T-R-U-S-T, trusting God. And I want to encourage you, you can trust him. There are four ways to give. Number one, you can go to the Brazewood website, brazewoodchurch.org, and give through the link there. You can download the Brazewood app onto your cell phone, and you can give through that link, or you can mail your tithes and offerings in. That is picked up every uh, week from the, from the post office. We just ask you not indicate any way that there's any financial uh, provision made there. But there's a fourth way, and I'm looking forward to this way, and that is to bring your tithes and offerings with you to the sanctuary. Now, it's very difficult right now. The COVID-19 pandemic seems to be growing. However, However, relax, God is in control. But coming back to the sanctuary, for those that can, it's safe. We go to great measures and cut no corners to make it safe, requiring a mask, social distancing. In fact, the sanctuary is set up, and we have plenty of room. Sanctuary is set up for there to be social distancing exercise. Even when we leave, and I bring this up to the point, even as we leave, we leave row by row, social distancing, and putting our offering in the container as we leave the service after the benediction, because we want it to. We want to make service safe for you. So join with me and celebrate the gift. Finally, three things I want to share with you as we conclude. Number one, relax. God is in control. You didn't think I'd miss it, did you? <laughs> relax. God is completely and totally in control today, tomorrow, and all throughout 2021. Secondly, as Donna said earlier, we love you. And we pray for you daily, praying God's blessing, praying God's favor, praying God's goodness into your life. We speak the word of God over you and believe that God has something awesome to show you, to give to you, and to be in your life throughout 2021. We love you. And look forward to seeing you, by the way. And then thirdly, would you just give me one more minute and watch this service to its conclusion. We have some announcements that will be taking place that will encourage you to the things that are coming this week. And Sunday, I will be presenting our new theme for 2021. I would love to have you come and celebrate that with us. We love you. God bless you. And I pray that we are going to be able to see you in 2021. In fact, my prayer is... COVID-19 is destroyed in the name of Jesus. We love you. God bless you.